Hey everybody, this is Stu Smith and Jeff Nichols, and today we are going to talk about Jeff's controversial combat swimmer stroke video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I set the internet on fire. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted everybody to know, and, and I commented on his, on his video, is that, um, you know, he is not wrong. I mean, the, the dolphin kick and the breaststroke kick is by far the more superior stroke than the scissor kick or little flutter kick. In, However, in, fact, in fact, try this. If you want to really test yourself, try to swim across the pool underwater doing constant flutter kicks. See how far you get, right? Or try to swim underwater, no arm pulls, and do it with a breaststroke kick and see how far you get. Now, you got to be a good breaststroker, right? And here's the dilemma. And, and I've been coaching swimming for, for many years, and most people have a really hard time learning how to do the dolphin kick or learning how to do the breaststroke kick. Yep. So all I'm adding to Jeff's video <clears throat> is that it kind of depends. You know, for me, I was never a competitive swimmer. So I can't teach the way Jeff teaches because he's swam competitively for – what, like 15, 15, 15 years, years yeah. you know, so he has the ability to open and close his legs with great power, which creates that, that breaststroke whip kick, right? Yeah. I have slowly learned how to do that in the last 20 years, but when I was a student and learning how to swim and going from a powerlifting football player, baseball player, wrestler, you know, type of athlete, dry land athlete, you know, I went, I was just doing the scissor kick. In fact, we didn't even have the combat swimmer stroke. It didn't really exist. It was the elementary side stroke, mm -hmm. which was a little yep. less efficient than – That's what it was called when I came through. Yeah, when it was a little less efficient than the combat swimmer stroke. So yep. combat swimmer stroke just kind of evolved, <clears throat> and what they did is they took a piece of freestyle, and they used that top arm pull, you know, just and goes all the way – you do a freestyle top arm pull, you do a bottom arm, which is – you hardly even need to use your bottom arm. It's more of a – they call it a breaststroke skull, right, as opposed to an all the way down and all the way up. Sometimes yeah. I teach the full arm pull to people who are sinking, and I have them actually push down first, yep. and then at the it same time – It becomes an S. Yep, yeah, drive, and then out the hip. Yeah. Yep. At the same time as they're inhaling to just kind of get them up so they can inhale, especially if they're they're – they're sinking in the water. So sure. there's, once again, there's so many different ways to do this, so many different ways to teach it. And it really depends on the student. Because when I see somebody swimming the combat swimmer stroke for the first time, I see two things. I see a natural tendency to stay on the strong side, right? Might be your right side, might be your left side, whichever top arm, you know, typically is your strong side. I'm a right-handed swimmer. My top, my strong side is when my right hand's on top. And I see a natural tendency towards a certain style of kick. Sometimes it's a breaststroke kick. Sometimes it's a scissor kick, you know, and that's it. You know, that those are the two things. And if I see somebody trying to do the combat swimmer stroke using a breaststroke kick and doing well, I say, keep doing it because it's yes. going to be faster than the scissor kick. Yep. Cause you're talking about efficiency. And I, I think that, so that's where I knew like I kind of cracked this egg you never know what's going to come out of that shell. That's what I did. Yeah. And, and I know that, but also I was careful about saying, hey, the PST is an animal that you have to play the game. Yeah. There are rules varies, for the PST. It varies yeah. from mentor to mentor and test to test and all these sort of things. But so, yeah, adhere to it because what Stu and I are talking about, we're building to the greater goal of <clears throat> is swimming in buds and fins. Now yes. – and that's where like that conundrum for me existed was like, well, wait a minute. Like you can't, you cannot, well, the likelihood in dive fins or good swimming fins to be able to scissor kick is next to impossible. It's just have, because the mechanics don't really, work. Yeah. You have to have really strong legs. If you you're have to do rotate your femur to cut through and then yeah. rotate it back. It, it doesn't, it, it doesn't translate well. So what I'm trying to get you guys to do really, maybe I should have prefaced it better is like, Hey, be a well-rounded swimmer because water competence leads to efficiency because you're relaxed. So yes. if you think of like a punch, it's tight, 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 loose, tight again. 
In swimming, people are like these refrigerators in the water trying to <laughs> claw at it. And when you can swim the backstroke and the side stroke and the breaststroke and the freestyle, and you can dive and use fins and all these sort of things, all of a sudden you're just like, you can just in the right. water. And then you can, you can get after it, right? You can be violent but relaxed. And that's the problem is a lot of people, the biggest problem I see is people that have never really been swim competent is they're treating it, so they're treating water like it's a mass in a weight room. They're trying to move that mass right. instead of move themselves. Yeah. Like it is that, and that's people, that's what people start clawing at the water. So for me, I just want guys to start going, all right. So listen to your mentor, go through that process because they're not ill willed towards you. They just like, here's the parameters that I'm going to be testing off of so I can submit those scores because they want some consistency. But what I want you guys to start doing and Stu wants you guys to start doing is just, again, it's like the whole training aspect. We want you to be well-rounded, not just be a runner, not just be lifting weights, not just doing calisthenics, not just run. We want you to do it all right. in the pool. The water is the great equalizer, especially the ocean. Yeah. And the more comfortable you can get in the water, the better you're going to be. And that's the key. You know, it doesn't take a world-class swimmer to make it through SEAL training. Mm -hmm. You just need to be comfortable in the water and confident to be able to do several different things. One, swim efficiently and fast. Put on a pair of fins, swim efficiently and fast. Tread water vertically, right? Because that, that's a pretty big challenge. And, um, and just be able to hold your breath, you know, yeah. underwater. Now that doesn't mean <clears throat> don't go practice holding your breath underwater and be by yourself. I don't even want to go there. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is. It is when we're talking underwater swimming, it is easier to learn efficiency underwater than to have to overstroke and kill yourself to get across the pool. I mean, I, yeah. I swim the 50 and I go four strokes to get to the other side of the pool and I do typically five strokes to get back you know it's just yep. you know 50 yards and it's yep. um it's, it's not it, and that's the thing too is like what what we also want you to think is that the kick is just a component of the stroke yep. you got to put it all together right the pull is a component and then based off of one of the guys that was here this week training with me he's a former professional basketball player he's six seven with size 16 feet Woo. he had never done the combat side stroke really with a, with a dolphin kick was well, size 16 feet mm. motoring. Yeah. Now, and it's just because he, you know, and then the kind of the way that and Stu and I were talking off camera, it can be very difficult and typically is very difficult to teach somebody how a dolphin kick should feel. Yeah. Right. Or even cause, cause looking at it, watching it doesn't translate like it does. Hey, when you're under a bar and a back squat, here's these checks to hit. Yeah, it, that doesn't work so uh, s seamlessly in a swim. You got to really look at the person, <clears throat> and for him, it was like, you know, because he's going to do his PST in South Carolina at a YMCA in a twenty-five yard pool. Yeah, and I'm like, it's six seven. I'm push off the wall, boy. Get oh, yeah, use yeah. it. You will never be faster then you are in a 500 yard swim than you are those first 10 yards off the wall. Yep. You, and you got to hit that it. wall. You got to yep. hit that wall hard, like a rocket, double arm pull, throw a little dolphin kick in there to kick off, you know, just keep your momentum up. Yep. But where Jeff was talking in his video is, you know, that recovery can screw you so much. It's like, you know, put push and then stop, push and stop. You know, whereas if you can keep that recovery tight, I mean, your yep. arms literally, have to come up your body and across your face and yep. come up like that. If you're out here like this, it's like putting on the brakes in the water. Yep. Big water sail. So yeah, yeah. Jeff's right. You know, there are, are so many different components to it. And whether you are a breaststroke kicker or a scissor kicker, you know, I, I, I've seen fast guys do both. You know, you can be fast at both. Now, will you be faster? Maybe, but the guys that beat me, we're all breaststrokers. We're all breaststroke kickers. Like I, I was a fast scissor kicker, right? But I, I just was never really good at the breaststroke. So I just swam my thing in, uh, with scissor kick. And I was still able to break eight, you know, able to even break seven at one point, you know, when I was uh, even post buds, probably I was like 25 years old. And uh, 
you know, pushing hard on, on learning some new technique with it. But anyway, it was, uh, it was an interesting, um, a video that I thought needed to be discussed because I think there's a lot of confusion out there about what is the combat swimmer stroke. You know, I have a three part breakdown on my, on my YouTube channel that discusses the three different parts of the, of the combat swimmer stroke from the kickoff to the double arm pull to the pull, breathe, kick, glide and breaks it down into those type of things. But, you know, I use a scissor kick. And I, if you look on, on my YouTube page, you'll see there are people that use a great breaststroke kick and they're much faster than I am, you know, and, and like Jeff is right, a dolphin kick and a breaststroke kick is going to be faster, yeah. you know, but how much if faster, you, how much faster you need, do you need to be? Yeah. And that's because you know? again, what we're talking, we're trying to transfer into with fins. Yes. That's like, I mean, get, get, just, that's the big point is we're saying now, again, if you have size 16 feet, I'm going to omit the scissor kick and the, and the, and the breaststroke kick on the combat side stroke. And t even if, if, well, now you can, it can't, but I did. I mean, I've tried it before I've done my PSTs because unless things have changed dramatically, I'm not saying don't do the combat side stroke without fins. I'm not saying that. But what I'm also saying is that when you're in a pool doing your PST at Buds and you have 220 people in there, you, you're, you're not going to, unless you're just flailing around, no one's going to be paying attention really. And then when you do go out into the ocean, no one is going to be paying attention. So other than you, so yeah. we got to start manipulating that a little bit. And, and also uh, I'm not speaking, trying to speak for anybody, but in buds, when you're in the doing your open ocean swims, all of that goes out the window, right? Let's like, how can we be the fastest and most efficient to cover that distance? Now, when you, when you get in a second phase and you try to put the dragger on, you will really see the value of that combat side stroke. Yeah. Okay. And also you'll see why when you have the dragger sitting there where that underwater and above, above hand, where you got, you got to manipulate around that dragger unit and try and swim. Oh, that's so nice. yeah. That's why you just turtle it, back. Just sit on exactly. The then you end up trying to turtle back and all those sort of things. But the reality is too, like I said, you're going to, you know, in a real compromised position, I'm going to drop my gear. But uh, again, we're, we're getting, I'm getting a little bit off the rails, but I get in, in Stu was my, my next and last piece is this, is that Stu is right on the biggest challenge that people try to do is they try to swing. They try to swim the whole stroke at once segment it, right? Each like the, the pool, like use pool buoys, use kickboards, use underwater swimming, like push off the wall, work on your glide, stand up, walk back. Yeah. create it create reps and i know Stu is already doing that with his guys like hey let's work on the glide because you got for me i feel my glide based off of my eyebrows when yeah. i feel the water slowing me down i, I, I stroke yeah that's my that's my basically my my speedometer is my eyebrows yeah but it so, took a long time for you to figure out that muscle or that that feel of your body yeah. to be able to for sure you, to, to make you think okay i'm slowing down how am I slowing down? You figured it out. You know, yep. it might be something else. It might be hair on your back or, you know, something, hair on yeah. your head, you know, something that uh, makes you feel that kinetic uh, feeling of movement in the water. You know, that sure. you know, you're slowing down. So, you know what I do? I look at the bottom in our pool. We have uh, these little tiles that make up the black line. And when I see those things stop getting blurry, <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I, because I, I can't focus on when I start to see them, I'm able to focus on them individually. Boom. I go right go. into a, uh, yep. to a stroke too. So there's right, get, many different well, ways. It just to comes it. down to process. And, and, and that's, there's the, the only thing wrong about doing things is not having a process. Yeah. And I think that cause it, whether it's the way the exact, the, the way that Stu's coaching it or I am or your mentors, we just want to make sure that we don't omit pieces of the puzzle. Right. And that's where I get frustrated. And I know Stu gets frustrated when you hear all these seal mentors saying, this is the only way to do it. Whether they were seals or not, we yeah. got to go, wait, wait, wait a minute. Like we're, we're working toward a greater goal here. Like we want you to perfect for lack of a better term, the combat side stroke for the PST. But we also want to empower you with the skill of swimming. So when you put fins on, when you put dive gear on, when you do be diverse, yeah. That's, I guess, my my last biggest point there. Yeah, yeah, that, you're exactly right. I mean, because 
one percent of your bud's career will be swimming without fins. Ninety nine percent of your bud's career will be swimming with fins. Yep. And very rarely ever will you swim without fins in the teams. I mean, it's just. I, yeah, I, I mean, I can't, I, I can't think of ever unless like, you're just. Oh. I mean, because even like we were doing like PTs and stuff and doing underwater hockey and stuff, it's with yeah. fins. Everybody had fins on. Yeah, yeah, and it's just. I mean, I, I, I would think too is like I, the one of the big questions. Maybe let's field this this question. I think it's a good, real good question to field. I, I want to get your take on it. So the question I got, one of the questions I got again today was, well, how often should I use fin? Is it an eighty twenty? Is it a fifty fifty? Is it what? It depends, and it kind of depends on, well, I, like my son, my son learned to swim when he was 10 months old, and I had a process because I taught less swim lessons, and I know, and, and even with adults, I kind of treat it the same way. as like, well, if someone has a real hard time feeling what the water should feel like on their feet, fins do a really good job of getting that tempo down. Oh, absolutely. But the thing is, is when you take those fins off, they're just all over the place sometimes. Yeah. So how much should fins be used? Mm-hmm. I, for a beginner, I don't like to mix the two mm-hmm. either. Either I'm going to go, Hey, just, let's just work on fin work today or just work without. Cause when you get them mixed together, they, there's too much of a contrast for me. That's just yeah. my style, but it, it, it just depends on what our goal is. What, what's your thoughts Stu? Yeah, I'm the same way. In fact, I'll keep somebody on their strong side until they master that before they play around on the weak side as yeah. well. But I definitely, it kind of goes back to our two and through cycle. You know, to get two buds, you got to play the game and ace this PST. Yep. Right. You got to take 500 yards swim. Don't kill yourself in the pool because you still have pull up, push up, sit ups, and a mile and a half run to do, and you have to do all those well. Yep. Right. That is a process to get two buds. Now, once you get two buds, you get your date. Focus mainly on swimming with fins. I mean, maybe go back to 20% without fins. You know, I, I would – and you, you need to gradually progress to 80%. But, you know, it doesn't take long. Maybe about a month of, you know, a couple of days with fins and then maybe adding another day with fins. And then, you know, yep. after about a month, you're doing 80% of your swims with fins. Because that's what I recommend. Because I tell you what, if you go to buds without having swum with fins – it sucks. I mean, I, we yeah. had guys at, at our buds class that just hated the swims because their ankles hurt so bad. Crushed. And that was the last one. I think is like, it depends on the fin. So oh, like if yeah. you, what I do, what I recommend people say, like, I need to get fins. Should I go get jet fins? Yeah. Not yet. Don't, that, it's like, I don't want you to get, if you're going to, if you've never ran before, I don't want you to get track flats. Mm-hmm. It'll crush your feet. So I'm going to get, okay, let's get ones that fit good, really flexible. Now, if you have size 16 feet, you're limited about jet fins, okay? Yeah, yeah. And there are some of the mare's dive fins. But so go get the $26 pair of Speedo Zoomers, like swim fins, a nice that fit really good. They're about yay long, about, you know, two feet long, and they're really flexible. They yep. want to, they get your ankles used to things, yep. just like you're saying, the tibialis anterior, and then maybe progress. But even then, though, once you learn that fin, you can put a lot of torque into that soft fin even. And that's what I recommend because a lot of guys, like, we probably you, I, we wore duck feet. We yeah, didn't get jet same. fins. And those things, I, had, yeah. I was a strong finner, and I was good. And those duck feet, boy, those Basically. duck feet, people drop buds from duck, with duck feet because they, they never got used to them. Yeah, they they you. I think you can still use duck feet if you want, but most everybody uses the rocket fin or jet yep. fin yep. type strap now so the guys with big feet will never fit into the duck feet no i was on the upper end of it i was a 12 and i got used to it and i was like hell with this right and they're just like but i got used to it because we did a lot of just like you like every class there's a lot in that that pre-buds and then what we called in dock and even first phase there's a lot of pool swim time playing that is in true there. and all the fins too all it's the fins, all fins. Oh, you'll do like five thousand yards just cruising that's, your, then, that's your morning workout Yep, and you will swim a lot in a pool, yeah. the big pool over there. Because now that pool is owned by NSW. It's not the base pool anymore. Right. So they don't – because they used to have to share with classes and lap swim. You don't even get access to that unless you're NSW now. Right. So they've got free reign of that sucker. But, <laughs> but it's, again, it's like anything else. Uh, we, we don't need you – 
we know how you guys are. We know you want to just jump in and get everything and get after it. Get a plan. And that's, that's, that's really what I think Stu and I um, really where we, where we reap what we sow is we're trying to get you guys to get a plan. Now, if you utilize ours or just use the context of stuff we talked about, it all comes down to the plan. Right. And, and once you get a good plan or even like, let's say it's a poor plan. Well, now you have a reference point of what you need to change. Yeah. So yeah. there's no real bad, bad in it. Just no, no. I, I, I will say this, that just kind of follow up with you is that, you know, learning the dolphin kick, learning the breaststroke kick, they may not be your primary kicks. You may still prove, you know, you may have practiced and learned the combat swimmer stroke with a scissor kick and you like that and it feels good. That's fine. Go with it. But you, you should also try to learn the dolphin kick because it will help you in very long ocean swims with fins. Yep. Um, you should also learn the breaststroke kick because – uh, if you think about what the egg beater is, the egg beater kick, when you're treading water and you're going to tread a lot of water, that egg beater kick is nothing more than an alternating breaststroke kick. Yep, that's all right. it is. And, and then on the flip side, so I'm going to get the wrinkle, and I'm not going to dive into this, but just food for thought. When we did the tread, the dread, the dread, the tread, the five-minute tread, I did it with a dolphin kick. Oh, did you? Yep, because I the egg beater for me, vertical – just was I couldn't get the power I just couldn't feel like I but horizontal I was gone yeah. but so and I, and then also too what many of you are probably gonna end up doing and that so that's why you need to practice the combat side stroke and I and I'm kicking myself for not covering it in that video the majority of the people are gonna do the combat side stroke with fins on with a really strong constant flutter it's not even really a flutter at that point it's just a big sweeping powerful constant run yeah in the water yeah. so that is what i would say 70 percent of the class give it a number of the sure. guys that went through made it through buds end up doing the flutter kick i would agree with that. all their runs their, their swims excuse me and then there was the the top six eight and ten of us that and it's just it's it's not that those guys were wrong it's just that they never got comfortable with it so yeah. again it's 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 not it's not begrudging anybody but just understand that – because, again, when I would get tired or I would want to uh, change up, I would go to the flutter kick. Sure. I would switch oh, yeah. sides. Absolutely. I would I – would, there was times, honestly, <clears throat> when you'd catch the tide right, I, I would turtle back a lot of it. Mm. I would be underwater, face up, underwater, just dolphin kicking underwater. I just – and, like, what I would do, too, is you get to a point where I was – we're comfortable and I'm not – just giving you the variety, like it, depending on what the tide is at in San Diego, the water where you're swimming is only 25, 30 feet deep. I would just swim on the bottom because <laughs> you don't have to breathe. Right, now, right. don't do that, okay, because a shallow water blackout. I'm just saying, like, it's one of those things where, like, I'm in third phase and I'm just been, we've been swimming our ass off. Yes. Like, you're acclimated to it, okay? Plus, just, at the island, you got like, hundred foot visibility out there. It's so ever. much fun. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, you literally swim, swim through the kelp ledge. You can see the great whites. It yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Like I remember we were putting a, again, side note, <laughs> we were doing, we were putting the, the, the limpets or the limits of the haversacks on the Japs college we made. Right. Same. You, we made them yep. you know, same with yep. you guys. And it's, you know, I have to put them to your chest and you fin fin upside down to get to it. And you turn. Yep. Like that's yep. the fastest way because those things are full of air. So you can't like push them down. So you stab them with your knife, put them to your chest and go down backwards until your back hits the ground. That's what we were taught until your back right. hits the sand, right. turn over. And when I turned over, there was a six foot tiger shark, like asleep against oh. the Jap scully or whatever. And it thing, man, I think went bam, took off. <laughs> I was like, Whoa. But it was, I mean, it was beautiful. Cause there were about 15 feet of water maybe. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Man, that was cool. So, yeah. anyways, that's that's the moral of the story. Just just practice it all. You will yeah. you will benefit tremendously by getting um, having having that variety added to your. your oh, swim absolutely! Because when you get over two miles of swimming, it, it hurts no matter which method you're doing. So, being able to change things up throughout the you know hour swim is beneficial for sure. So, yeah. Yep. All right. So I think we're done. 
with Combat Swimmer Stroke. We are for yeah. now. If you got questions, ask them. Happy to help you. Awesome. So, all right. All right. All right, Stu, appreciate it. Okay. Thanks.